Um, I want to talk about our gifts this morning, and I, I want to relate it to just how, um, you know, our, our son, um, well, one of our sons, I don't think Hayden gets into to the draft as much as, as Hunter does. Um, he, he has other interests, but uh, um, so in pro football, we've just gone through a draft, and that's where the, the, the team's... You know, they get to choose players from the from the college ranks, and they get to uh, uh, plan their next season. And and um, so, if you'll just bear with me, I think there's an analogy we can get from this that I would like. Uh, so, so the Bronx has been doing like really bad the last few years, and um, <laughs> they're they're in need of help in different areas. And so, what they did this last year, and uh, they. John Elway, he's actually my age. He looks like way older than me. Please say that, yeah. But, 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 but he was the Broncos, you call it general manager, is that right? Not, not during this draft. No, I mean before he was. Oh, yeah. uh, he, he was before, and I don't want to too much, put too much on him, but they haven't been doing too well. And uh, so anyway, they got this new guy this year, and and I, so I've been following it just a little bit more because Hunter keeps, you know, sending me a text. You know, this is what's going on. This is what's going on. And uh, it's all his fault. But then, so then I went ahead and put the app, the Denver Broncos app on my phone, you know. And so, so you can bring up, you know, the latest, who, who they're, you know, they, they trade for somebody. And, and, and so I, I started uh, uh Understanding, I guess, this manager position a little bit more because it's 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 critical. Uh, this is the guy that decides uh, how to fill all the positions on the field, and um, you can't hire a, a kicker to be a lineman. And you, 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 everybody has. The, the, in fact, when you get to the to the foot to the, the uh, you know professional level. These guys are, they're not just good, they're, they're gifted. They're actually, you know, they have a, another level of ability. It's, it's not just something they, they went and practiced a lot. No, no, they're, they were kind of born for this. And not just born to just play football, to play one position on the football field. You know? <laughs> and so... So I, I've kind of been following this a little bit. And so, so this, this manager, what he does is he starts studying and they, they study the, the, the different players that are available and, and, they, and they try to leverage their ability to get a, the, the, not, just, not just maybe the best player at that position, but the one that will fit in with all the other players. And so it's, it's, it's not enough, and we're finding this out, and we're kind of hope we kind of got our fingers crossed. There's a, there's, a, there's a quarterback that's like got the MVP from last year, and he's, he's not happy with his manager because his manager hasn't been getting the players around him that he needs. <laughs> okay, just hang with me a little bit. Just kind of go with me a little bit with this. So what's the purpose of all this, though? Um, what's the purpose of all this? We want to win. We want to win the game. We want to win the Super Bowl. We want to win these things, but for that to happen, you can't just get Aaron Rodgers. You got no. You bet no because because if you don't have a line, if if everybody's not doing their part, if if you got a kicker that can't, you know, reach the goalposts. Yeah, you can get right up to right man. Everything's dependent on him. Aaron Rodgers is on the side of the field now, you know. And now, well, what are you going to do? Well, you better have the right person in every place, and it's not, and it's on the manager to make this happen. It's kind of interesting. You got all these really gifted people, but until they are found, acquired, put in their place, and enabled to be who they need to be in this setting. You don't win. You just don't win. Okay? So here, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit being our gift manager. Can we, can we look at it this way today a little bit? Uh, 
Because I, I believe one of the biggest challenges we have in this time that we have left on this earth is to discover what God has placed inside of us and for it not to just be dormant inside of us because when God places something in us, it's not haphazard. It's not halfway. It's not something that is, that is incapable of being in the Super Bowl. <laughs> but it's very much in need of a manager. Somebody to help you discover it. Somebody to help you develop it. Amen? And the Holy Spirit has come to be that for us. All right? So let's just, let's just go through this. I think there's some great things we can pull from this because I... Um, I, I see this body, I see the church body as uh, th there's no end to the possibilities. But you remember how the Holy Spirit came. He said, you're going to receive what? Power after the Holy Ghost comes where? On you. Now the Holy Spirit is in us all the time. And he comes and he does things that causes fruit that makes us look more like God. But there's something else that we need. It's, it's a gift that comes on us. And it's something that, that causes us to be able to do something specific for the purpose of God on this earth. And we cannot do it without the Holy Spirit coming on us. So... It wasn't until the day of Pentecost that the, the disciples were able to be witnesses. To actually go out and spread, and the church spread all over the place. Why? Because, because they just went out and shared the gospel. No, they did it in gift, by a gift that they were given. You know, even Pastor Kim up here this morning, I think we had a demonstration of this this morning, right? Right? But that wasn't Pastor Kim. That wasn't Pastor Kim. And yet she had, to, she had to participate in it. She had to step out, do something that was beyond her mind's ability, beyond her, her natural capacity to do it. But when she opened her mouth and, and activated that, there was an infusion of power to impart something to us that could be a blessing to us. Amen? Amen? Now, this was a demonstration of it this morning, but this isn't just for Pastor Kim. So we'll, we'll, we'll see this. But, but we need the Holy Spirit. And this is why we cannot be halfway with our relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, we had some wonderful songs we sang about this this morning, didn't we? You know, move Holy Spirit, move. Um, we offer ourselves as a sacrifice unto you. Use us as you choose, you know. But we'll see, this cannot, he, he cannot be our halftime helper. <laughs> He's got to be there all the time. Until, until, we'll, until, until we are full of the Spirit, we are not being helped by the Spirit. And there's a difference between walking in the, in the gift that we've been given by the Spirit and receiving of the gift of the Spirit. Um. So what is a gift? And it's a specific ability, not just to have your ability. Sometimes when we think, man, that person's, or, or somebody tells you you're gifted, you think, wow, give me the glory, give me the glory, I'm gifted. <laughs> you know, but a gift has no purpose until it's serving, until it's accomplishing something that's going to take you to a victory, all right? And so uh, to serve in a position to accomplish a purpose, that's what a gift is for. <laughs> and, and I dare say in, in this room right now, there are a multitude of gifts that still need to be in service. Okay? I include myself. I mean, uh, God doesn't just necessarily give us one gift. He'll, he'll give us more. Amen. Um, so a gift, uh, it's not enough just to have a gift. It can just sit there dormant your whole life. Yeah. I mean, this happens in sports all the time. Sure. And it's amazing. You can take somebody that has a, uh, 
and it, it, really an amazing gift. Um, and they can be less valuable just depending upon what they do with it. Now, Hunter can give me some good examples here real quick. But the, well, I think of somebody like Larry Bird versus, uh, you know, Steph Curry or something. Didn't, I mean, he worked for, uh, he had a gift, but it was like he worked more with it. But he's slow. See, that's, that's where I'm going with this. You know, when you look at him, you think, no, that's not necessarily a gifted person. But then they go play because they do more with the gift that they do have. You see that? Yeah. And then you got Steph Curry. I mean, I, he just, you know, he's just crazy good. But, but he's worked at it, too. He's done a lot with what he has. Yeah. And he's tenacious to do. You, t- you take somebody else. I, I, I would dare say there's several people that have that same gifting that like to watch movies and play video games more than they like to develop their gift. Hello? <laughs> we, can, we can take this on, can't we? Because the time that it takes to develop in your gift is going to take away from the time it takes to consume things in this earth. Amen? And that's not going to be comfortable at some point. We're going to have to say, no, I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to do something else. Right? So it needs discovery. You got to know that it's there, right? Uh, Buddy's got a lot of discovery tools for that. I think you, you can do gift discoveries and stuff like that. But I believe we have the Holy Spirit to help us also. Because God will put a desire in your heart that you can, and that's the best kind. Man, I'm doing what I want to do, right? Um, but then it needs to be developed. It needs to be placed. It needs to be in service. It needs to, <laughs> doesn't do any good to just sit on the sidelines. You got to get in the game, right? And then there needs to be a maintained direction. When I mean that, when I say that, that means you have, you have a, uh, a singleness of purpose for it. And this is where in sports, and we're using sports, this is where in sports you can see that, that it's not enough for somebody just to be a star. In fact, this has happened in basketball. I heard, heard an example. I was trying to remember who it was, actually, for the Spurs. Somebody, uh, was it, was it um, uh, their, their, their center? They were saying that, no, the one before that. Anyway, he, he was setting all kinds of personal records for a long period of time until, and, and it was all about him. He was gifted. And he was getting glory, but his team was not winning. David Robinson. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> and they said as soon as he started, he adjusted his, his purpose was not for him to be the star, but for them to win. All of a sudden, he started having more assists. He started pushing his team up. He started, he, he, his, his purpose wasn't just for him to shine. It was for the whole team to shine because they needed to win. Yeah. Right? And so what happened in that is he laid down his own glory for the, the chance to win. And what is that? That's an adjusted direction. What is the direction of your gift? And this is where we need the Holy Spirit for this. This is never going to be about us. It's going to be about God's purpose. Amen? And the more that's true, the more we'll be liberated because our gift is not just for us to speak something ourselves. Our gift is to assist somebody else. Yeah, Amen? Good. All right. So why, why do we even have gifts? Why does God even give us these gifts? Because it's necessary for victory over opposition. You, you would think, you know, if God wants to just if God wants to just win, he should just, he can just go win. He's, he's God. You know, there, there's some things going over on over in Israel right now that are really amazing. And, uh, you know, I feel sorry for anybody that comes up against Israel, you know. Because not only, and we were praying for this the other day, not, not only did, are they superior in their, in their weaponry, but they have God. You know, when they were having the, when they were getting independence, uh, 
you know, that, long, that what was it, a six-day war or whatever it was? Um, uh, man, there's stories about how their, their enemy saw visions of angels. And, and uh, why? Because it's not just them. Amen? And so, but, but it's amazing how this is, though, because they, had, they, they have to take the field. They have to go. It's like, it's like when David defeated the giant, he had to get out on the field. He didn't just say, hey, God, there's a giant over there. Go get him for me. Right? right? Come on, that's and so there's, there's a victory that God wants to win on the earth today. And sometimes we can get caught up in the little, in the little side by battles that are going on. And we want to we defeat this political thing or that political thing. And we do need to be involved in that. Right? I mean, last week, man, that was... That was great. We need, to, we need to stand up and say no, right? But what is, what is the bigger victory that Jesus came to accomplish here on the earth? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish. You know what victory is to God? When somebody comes to him. When somebody comes to him. Amen? This is, this is a big thing to God. You know, all this other stuff, I tell you what, the closer you get to God, the more you, the, the, the more you get convinced of God's greatness, everything else that would seem to give you anxiety and heart palpitations or whatever else is is going to melt away in the wonder of how great he is. But the one thing that God cannot do is in himself, he cannot bend the will of anybody. And his desire is just to be known, received. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. You know, that's that talking about being on the cross, but it's also, how is that, how is that happening here on the earth today? Because God had, wants to win a victory. Just like I want the Broncos to win the Super Bowl, God wants to win a victory. And he, he, he's going to win this victory of souls through us. He needs a team. This is how God works. Again, you think, well, God just go save the world. If, you know, you hear somebody praying, you know, that's kind of, I don't know, I think it's a little bit naive to pray this way. God save the world. Well, you got to start with your neighbor. You know, you, you know, he's already sent Jesus to save the world. He's already done what he's going to do. Now he says, what are you going to do to be my uh, kicker, my, my quarterback? My, well, I, I need people to take their place. And I've gifted you for a specific place. And it becomes necessary to accomplish God's purpose of the triumph that he wants in this. You know what? This is all going to pass. And the only thing that's going to really matter when it's all over is who was one to the Lord. Who was one to the Lord? Amen? And God will take all the circumstances that are going on right now and he'll turn them as long as he has a team to take the field and do their part. Amen? All right. I'm still talking. All right. So, so we need a manager, though. So if we, you know, we can say, okay, we, we, need to, we need to acknowledge our gifts. But no, this isn't just us. We need the Holy Spirit. He is our man. He's our gift manager. He wants to help us discover these things. So sometimes, you know, we can get caught up in, you know, different moves of the Holy Spirit, whether we agree with that or we agree with it. But the Holy Spirit wants to go beyond all the things that we would be seeing with our eyes to his real purpose is to come in and accomplish a God victory purpose in and through us. And he's already planted a gift, a Stephen Curry gift. It's actually Stephen, but... He needs to learn how to say his name. It's spelled the same as mine, so. so okay, Steph. Steph Curry. Uh, 
All right, so let's look at this. What, what is the God purpose for his church? Remember what happened with Adam? There was, a, there was a, the biggest defeat. God set them up in the garden for total dominance over the world. They were supposed to occupy and dominate and name the animals and, and everything. And what did Adam do? He, he, <laughs> he dropped the ball just before the end zone. You know, it's like, you know, he messed up big time. Because <laughs> what was the heart of God in the creation of man? It was fellowship, wasn't it? It was to be reconciled, to be together, to be with us. Amen? Yes. And so, you know, sometimes we can, there's so, there's so much about God in our relation and, and the promises that we have in him. I mean, we can, we can, we can know that he's going to provide all, all of our needs, heal all our diseases, you know. And, and, but what is his real purpose in all of this? It's to accomplish his Super Bowl on the earth. He needs us to be successful. He needs us to be victorious. Why? Just so we can walk around and be more spiritual than somebody else? No, so that we can take our place to fulfill our gift to accomplish his Super Bowl victory on the earth, right? And what does that look like to him? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So what happens? You know, when a, when a baby's born, they're given natural giftings at the moment they're born, before that. That's why we don't mess with babies in the womb, because they're already gifted for a purpose in life. Amen? Um, but when we're born again in Christ, there's a, a new infusion of a spiritual gift that God puts in us. And the old junk that was... This, that, that, that would keep us back. It's all gone. We're given something new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. What happened when we became born again? Yay, celebrations. The angels, they, they throw a party. Every time there's a new, it's, it's like, it's like a, a, what are those? You were a cheerleader, weren't you? Oh, I thought you were too. Oh, okay. Well, anybody a cheerleader? <laughs> we used to have those. We used to have those. Uh, those pep rally. There you go. Before the games, you know, and they get out there and cheer, and and uh, um, it's always kind of funny to me that we'd be losing by thirty points and they'd still be on the sidelines, <laughs> acting, like, <laughs> acting like something good's going on. <laughs> you know, wasn't really too good that was going on, but. <laughs> But every time there's a new, there's somebody that's reconciled to God. Every time there's a, there's a heart that's, that's in communion with God again, it's a victory. It's a victory. And you know, it wasn't just God that caused that to happen. So all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us. Now, this is the cool thing. Test. So... So he sent Jesus so that we could be reconciled to him, right? But then he said, every person that's reconciled gets on the team. They become part of my accomplished purpose. Wasn't just enough to send Jesus. Jesus made it possible for the Holy Spirit to come to put together a Super Bowl team, right? To manage this gift that we have in Christ. Amen? All right. So I'm not done with this part. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So what happens with this? It's like, it's like, uh, it's like this new manager that we have. He's, he's putting together the team. And, and when they take the team, they're actually representing the Denver Broncos. They wear the uniforms, <laughs> right? 
And, and, and God's purpose is to reconcile people back to him. And he, he's, he doesn't go himself. He goes through us. He needs us to be victorious. You know, what, what, what's really difficult to do is, is to have your star player getting out there depressed about his financial contract, kind of downtrodden with the flu or COVID or whatever, you know, <laughs> and then expect him to throw a 70-yard touchdown, you know. No, you need him at his best. You need him secure in who he is. You need him healthy. Not just halfway healthy, big time healthy. Right? Because even though he's out there because of you, he, he has to be out there for you. That's really the way God is with us. He said, you know what? You can't do it without me. You have to have me. But I'm not going unless you do. Amen? All right. For this purpose, we've been called and gifted with or without our response. So I like this out of Romans 11. You guys are familiar with this probably. But it says, for God's gift and his call can never be withdrawn. So, so when we're born again, we're, we're made to be a new creation in Christ. All things are passed away. All things become new. At that moment, there's an infusion of a gift for a purpose on this earth. Now, whether or not we do anything with it, even whether or not we live for the Lord, it's still there. This is kind of a cool thing because what, what can, can be a source, what the enemy wants to come do and say, well, you missed it. You don't get to, to be who you were supposed to be. You know what? You can be it the whole, every breath that you have left on this earth. You can submit to the gift that God has given you. Amen? Now, the sooner you get started on it, the better. You know, the more, you know, how they say it's, it's hard to steer a parked car, you know. And the further you get down the road, the more you can steer it, you know. <laughs> the more places you can go, the more you, you respond. But I love this. It says his calls, his giftings, he will never take them away. Uh, but you, you have to look at them as something that they're not just you. They're requiring his development for them to be what they need to be. Now, I just want to encourage all of us right now in this, in this statement right here that God has called us. He's called each one of you. Now, some gifts, you know, here's what the enemy wants to do with, with the gifts God's given me. And, and, and man, I was, I was just talking to him about it this morning. It's like, God, you've called me to stand up in front of people and say something. Man, that, that's valuable. That's a big thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to value that. I'm going to see that as, as something big, and I'm going to do everything. I'm going to give my all to that. It's not me. It's what God's given me to do. And, and here, we'll get into what some of these gifts are later, but I believe God wants to develop that in each one of us. That there is something. You, you might not get up in front of people and talk like this, but you might. Where do you start, though? You have to start somewhere. And God will, will start you on, uh, it. first of all, it starts off with the overall purpose of reconciliation. You have the heart for that. And then we'll see some other things here in just a second. But there's a necessity of responding right now and saying, because what the enemy wants to do is say, uh, what you have is not really all that big a deal. You're, you're not really all that. God, God's going to go ahead and do it without you. He doesn't need you. You know, just go watch Netflix. Just go get you a bag of potato chips and just, just enjoy the day. <laughs> and the Holy, Holy Spirit saying, come away, come away. <laughs> come away from that to a place where you can actually be functional in the body. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Get this back. Um, so with the Holy Spirit, there's activated gifts for God's purpose. So, and I, I referred to this before, but, it, but you will receive power 
when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So were they witnesses before the Holy Spirit came on them? They, were, they had the, 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 the given gift, right? But it took the Holy Spirit, the reception of the Holy Spirit on them for that gift to be activated. Now, they needed to go out once they received it. That was something I was thinking about. You know, they didn't stay in the, in the upper room when they received the Holy Spirit, did they? <laughs> Why? Because the purpose wasn't to be in an upper room. Holy Spirit isn't for us to just stay in here and just say, how wonderful this is, how wonderful this is. The whole purpose is for us to be filled and to go out. The whole purpose of the Holy Spirit is to activate a gift inside and you start saying something that you couldn't say before. It was there inside of you, but you needed the manager to manage that gift, to make it come alive. Amen? Well, I need the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> okay, I'll get this. The gift of the Holy Spirit for the whole, and, and this is for the whole body. So I want to encourage you with this because um, there was a gift that came on them in the upper room, but it wasn't the gift that was given to them in their new creation. Can you follow me on this? <laughs> because the gift that came on them in the upper room was a gift that is given to every believer. It's available to every believer. It's one that is, is it, you know, salvation is a gift, isn't it? It's a free gift. You have to do nothing to receive it. It was freely, you know, but all you have to do is you do have to receive it, right? And the Holy Spirit is very similar to, to salvation. It's available to all who receive it. It's, it's, it's not a specific gift for a specific purpose. It's a gift to everybody to be our manager. So on the football team, you have a whole bunch of specific gifts for specific roles, but they all come under the gift of the manager. To put them in their role. To allow them to be who they need to be. They can't just get out on the field and say, I got a gift, I got a gift. And just, let me play, let me play. No, you have to go through the, you have to go through the manager. He has to direct you in how you're going to go, right? Um, so, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you. What is that? To minister to you, to make it possible for you. And he will be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. So who is Jesus talking to? Was he just talking? He said, write this, write this down, write this down. This is only for the people that I have chosen to receive of this gift. Make sure that they're the only ones that get this message. Didn't come that way, did it? And when, when he said this, he said this is going to be for everybody, didn't he? This is a gift for everybody. And what is that gift? It's to come to be a manager of the gifts that you have inside. And I, I, I want to emphasize this because sometimes we can say, well, that's a different gift. No, it's, it's not something that you... This part of your gift is a new creation. It's a gift to everybody from above to be our manager. Okay. All right. I got another one for that. It's for each one. So Acts 2, 38 says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Did he say, um, Every one of you will receive the uh, forgiveness of your sins, but only some of you that are specially chosen ones will receive the gift of the... He said everybody, didn't he? Each one included Holy Spirit, didn't you? So you can see that there's a difference when we're looking at gifts from God, that there's a difference 
of the reception of the Holy Spirit from above and the, and the implantation of a gift on the inside for a purpose. Does that make sense? But you need the one from above in order to activate the one from inside for it to be what it needs to be. And so the more you submit yourself to the reception of this Holy Spirit from above until he not only is on you, but he's in you and he's coming out of you. Why? Because we, the Holy Spirit, in order for that gift to be activated in its full purpose, it's going to have to bypass the limitations of our human frame, of our minds. Now, it's, he's, he's not going to go beyond what we allow him to do. But he needs us to submit to what he wants to do through us. Amen? The promise is to you and your children and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. Don't you like that? This is for everybody. This is encouraging. So God's not going to keep something from you. Remember Jesus said, he said this, if you ask uh, of me for bread, I won't give you a rock. If you ask for me uh, a fish, I won't give you a stone. I'm going to give you what you ask for. He said, and he's talking about the Holy Spirit, right? And he, and he wasn't singling anybody out. He said, this is for everybody. To help us in discovering, dis developing placement and direction, our gift manager. So this is who, who uh, the Holy Spirit has come to be for us. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts. So there are different things that, that we receive by the Spirit when we become a new creation in Christ. And they are to enable us to be as an uh, an important member of the team. And we cannot put them down in the least. Don't you like that, that water boy on, on the sidelines? Man, he's so happy with the job he's got. He's so thrilled to be there, you know. And, and he never even touches the ball, but he's essential, you know. And the more you value what God has given you right now, remember the... the, 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 the uh, the parable of the talents. He said, depending on what you do with what I give you right now, I'm going to even give you more. You take care of the gift that's already there. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you discover more. I'm going to help develop more in you. But what are you doing with what you have right now? Because it needs to have a bigger purpose too. <clears throat> There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. So you have a different gift, but the same manager. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but in the same way, God who does the work in all of it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles. And another, the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another sp Spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown in languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So, God has placed a spiritual gift inside of each one of us. It's not for us to start looking at ourselves, it's, for, it's to start looking out. What can we do? How can we serve? Because a gift is as dormant, is ineffective, is not accomplishing a thing until it's on the field serving. Amen? The Holy Spirit has come to help us with that. And I see that for us as a church body. We need to, we need to discover these things. Amen? 
And we need the Holy Spirit to help us with this. So we want to move. This is a move. This is a move. You know, what is what's this moving for? The Holy Spirit moves to activate gifts inside of us for the Holy Spirit to take us out and for Jesus to be seen in the world around us. Amen? And most of these gifts that he was talking about have something to do with something that's coming out of your mouth, a spiritual perception. And what is the purpose of that? For you, so you can go tell your friend, did you, you know what I found out about them? <laughs> No, it's to go to them and, and to, to impart revelation. If people can just know, if people can just hear, and the Spirit has called us to be, this is God's, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. We don't approach things in the way the world does. They're mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Amen? And this is how they're done. They're done by the Spirit. You speak one word by the Spirit, it's not you didn't come out of your... You're noggin. <laughs> it came because you valued this treasure that's inside of us. Amen? Enough to begin activating the reception of the Holy Spirit to where he occupies everything else about you. And now when you're, you're approaching somebody, you're not approaching them wondering what they think about you. You're approaching them wondering what God thinks about them. Amen? And it becomes a different motive of your, of your life. Right? But we need the Holy Spirit for this. Man, we need to draw on the power of the Holy Spirit more and more, don't we? Amen? It needs to be a constant thing throughout our day. Praise God. So God's heart imparted through our gifts. It's in need of the Spirit's management. 1 Peter 4.10 God has given each of you a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Sounds like that other one we were looking at, doesn't it? Do you have the gift of speaking? Now, what I want to get in this is this great responsibility we have to the management. You know, my heart goes out to these rookies that, that, that just mess up, you know. So much pressure's on them. And they, they drop a pass that hits them right in the chest, you know, or, or something like that. What are they doing? They're letting down the management. Some manager cho chose them to be on this team, and now they've just proven that they weren't worthy of being chosen. You know? We've been chosen. We've been called to be on this team in these days. You know what? This We are privileged you know, I, I, I was reading, I was reading to, to Braden and, um, you know, about David and, and, you know, many of these stories, Moses, you know, the, the Red Sea and, and, and um, you know, these amazing things that happened in the past. Those guys wish they were now. They wish they were here. They're jealous of us, you know. <laughs> because right now we get to, we get to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost in accomplishing God's purpose right now. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Don't you like that? This is not just me. I'm representing God. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Don't you like that? These gifts are not for us. There is no glory in a gift until it's given to God. Gifts in need of purpose and love. And I just want to, uh, the, the placement of 1 Corinthians 13 is very necessary for the direction. So one of the things I showed is, is a, a purpose of a manager is to give direction. What are we going towards? What are we wanting to accomplish and you can be the best anything, any, any position on the field. And if you're not trying to help win the game with everybody else, you're missing out on the purpose. You can have the best gifts, best spiritual gifts. And if the purpose is not love, if you feel like you've, you've personally failed because something didn't happen that you spoke, your motive was wrong in the first place. 
you weren't being led by the Spirit in the first place. Because the Spirit will only lead you in love, which is a, a complete denial of self. <laughs> right? 1 Corinthians 3, 13. Uh, the 13, I'm just, I'm just going to read a few of these. We're not going to see everything that love is. But if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that moves mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. How do you avoid that? The Holy Spirit is our guide. He always leads us to love. If we're led by the Spirit, what are we? The sons of God, right? And what we're doing is we're reflecting the, the heart of God. And it never, the thing that's on the outside of hmm, of the representative of God continually, the first thing anybody's going to see is love. Because they're not going in their own strength. They're not going for their own purpose. They're, own, they're only going to accomplish the heart of God. And what is the heart of God? What's the victory he wants to do? He's, he loved us so much that he sent Jesus that we would not have to perish, that we could be reconciled unto him. Amen? So every time we take the field, it's with one purpose. To bring people back to the love of God. Amen. This is wonderful because it strips from us an ability to be offended or to be discouraged. You're not even discouraged. Well, that wasn't even me anyway, so why would I be discouraged? You know? So gifts are temporal, will pass, while their purpose never will. So 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. And where there is knowledge, it will pass away. So the purpose we've been given in Christ, as it's set before us continually, to love, to reconcile people unto God, that's something that is foundational. It never goes away. Our gifts, these other things, we don't put as much value on. That's not, we're not seeking after the gift itself. We're seeking after the victory that the gift will accomplish. Amen? All right. Can you handle... Just one more? All right. I like this out of Zechariah. We like to sing songs about this. and uh, You know, a lot of times when we, when we think about mountains, we think about, you know, some uh, great personal issue that we're going on in our life. You know, we might have like a, a an addiction or, or an oppression or, you know, a lack or something. Boy, that's a mountain. You know what, what God sees as a mountain is... The harvest of souls that need to be brought in. You know? Now, th th there will be a purpose. You know, God wants to, like I said, he wants to bring victory in our life over these things. Everything that we're going through. He needs us to be successful, healthy, wealthy, on the field. So that's going to be a part of all of it. Amen? But what is the purpose? That's not the destination. The destination is the victory that God wants to accomplish. Amen. And when you keep that as your destination, you get all, <laughs> all of these follow after you, right? Seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things can't help but follow you because your destination is the right goal. As long as you are, are, are intent on the victory that God wants to accomplish, it's God's heart, that mountain that is before you those people that need to know God, that's a mountain. <laughs> it will be by the Spirit. It won't be in our own strength. We go in our own strength. You know, I think this, it's been demonstrated in, in this last year. I think there's been a lot of churches that have been going on their own strategies, going on their own plans to not necessarily win people and reconcile them to God, but to get them on their numbers and to build up their, their own notoriety. And I'm not picking on anybody in particular, but I, I see that there's been an, and it's become obvious maybe where the, the true destination is, the real goal. So in Zechariah 4, 6, he says, he said unto me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. 
It's not by might, not by power. That means it's not by, by just what I can do myself. It's by the gift of God. But by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty, this mountain will be removed. I didn't keep, keep, get the rest of it on there, but this mountain will, will be removed and it will be rendered to be like a plain. And who will do the shouting? We do the shouting, right? Because God it, it empowers us by the spirit to do the work of the spirit. Amen. So, praise God. I believe God has has been a word for us this morning. Amen? Um, and there needs to be in us, and, and uh, we'll just take a few moments. I, I'd like for us to, to, to do this this morning, to be able to just take a few moments. And um, we've had a wonderful time already, just receiving of the Spirit, haven't we? Just whatever God wants to do. But directly with regard to this, if we're going to accomplish our purpose here in Liberty Hill, and I, I believe God has some things that he wants us to, to stretch. You know, when, every, every time there's a gift that's found, something has to be done with it. And uh, I believe God has been drawing some people into this church. He's going to draw more people that have specific gifts that are going to enable outreach to the community. In greater ways I believe and, and I believe each, for each one of us the more we receive of the Holy Spirit let's do it with an intent of God's heart being accomplished through us you know it's so wonderful what the Holy Spirit comes to do he comes to bring peace he comes to bring you know um, encouragement he's the lifter of our heads but it's not just for us <laughs> amen there's a need and we need to have this this Longing, God, show me. Show me so that I can see how really valuable it is what you're putting, what you've already put in me. Activate this. This is a promise that we've had that when the Holy Spirit comes on us, we will be. Amen? And let's activate our faith with regard to the gifts that God's already put in us. And let's speak to the mountain that would be a restriction to God's fullness being walked out in our life. Can we do that? Speak grace to it.